there's 40,000 steps in a marathon and every time you make a step, you take um, the full force of your body weight plus all of the acceleration that's put into that. So it's a really highly impactful event, um, i.e. the impact on your joints is quite significant and on your muscles. That much impact through joints like the hips, the knees, the ankles and even the feet um, can stop, cause those joints to be painful. In long distance running, you need to produce force, but you don't need to produce maximal force. So you need to produce force to propel yourself forward for long periods of time. So your muscles don't need to be as strong, but they need to be fatigue resistant. And those muscles are smaller in size than uh, in a sprinter. And actually um, having a lighter body mass uh, is helpful in running because with every step, you have to propel your body weight. And therefore being a lean, light, um, specimen makes you more adapted to endurance running than being a very strong, powerful sprinter. We know there are certain physiological characteristics that a marathon runner has to possess to be elite at that event. Um, they have to have a really big aerobic engine and we measure that by measuring their VO2 max. That's the maximum amount of oxygen they can take in, transport to the muscles and utilise. But the second and almost equally important component is being a really economical runner. So it doesn't matter if you have a really big engine or a really big VO2 max. If you're actually very inefficient at running, um, that's not going to help you run for 26 miles. So running economy, um, i.e. how much energy it takes you to take each step per kilometre, um, is very important. During the race, fueling is really important. What will happen is the preferred fuel for the body when you're running a marathon is carbohydrates, but we don't have many um, great stores of carbohydrates, so we will run out. Um, and when you hit the wall in a marathon, it's because you've run out of carbohydrate to use as a fuel for running. So what you want to try and do is keep your carbohydrate stores topped up along the marathon um, race um, to prevent us having to use predominantly fat as a fuel because when we use fat as a fuel, we have to go slower because as a process of burning energy, it's a, a more complex and slower system. So we can only support slower exercise when we use fat as a fuel. So dehydration causes a decrease in blood volume. It makes the heart work harder because the heart has to pump harder to get the blood, the less blood volume around the body. And therefore it increases the physiological strain of that particular exercise. Um, so keeping hydrated will actually reduce the physiological strain and reduce the level of fatigue that you experience. Thermoregulation or your ability to dissipate heat from your body when you're doing a marathon is really important. When your muscles contract to allow you to run, they produce about 10 times more heat than they do to allow you to walk. And therefore, even on a cool day, your body will be producing lots and lots of heat. And if the environment is very hot around you, like in a spring or a summer marathon, then you've got an extra environmental challenge as well. The body's working really hard to keep you cool. Unfortunately, that has a negative effect on um, the resources you can send to the working muscles. So as soon as you divert blood flow away from working muscles to your skin to cool you, you're taking away resource, energy, oxygen um, from the muscles that are working. You can help keep your body cool um, through strategies such as drinking cold drinks and also running through cold showers during the race will help. Every athlete is individual in the way they sweat during exercise. On average, athletes will tend to um, lose around a litre an hour. Um, it's fairly hard to replenish that adequately in the race and it's okay to finish slightly dehydrated. Um, we know that athletes can finish up to 3 or 4% dehydrated um, when they complete a marathon. The recovery from a marathon takes quite a while. It's a long race and it has a really significant effect on the body. Uh, muscles become damaged, so muscle fibres become frayed and torn, and that takes a long time to recover. Um, your body has an inflammatory response after that type of long um, bout of exercise, and you'll find that elite runners will have probably up to two weeks off after a marathon race, and then about two weeks a fairly easy training before they ease themselves back into um, their normal training loads. 
Um, so it's important to take time to recover and it's important to have absolute rest um, in the days immediately um, after the marathon race and then ease yourself fairly gently back into full training mode.